Hey guys, this is Daniel. Welcome to my short tutorial about how to use an often overseen technique called range masking inside Adobe Lightroom and Camera Raw. The sample image we'll be working on is this one in front of you. It's from the Saxon Switzerland in Germany, in the east of Germany, a really popular and also beautiful area. We had a nice fall sunrise, so all in all nice conditions for landscape photography. And like I said, I want to show you the range mask inside Camera Raw. That's what I'm using. Um, I'm in Photoshop already, but it doesn't matter. Uh, for the adjustments we want to make here, it's all right to go to the Camera Raw filter and start editing there. Okay, so uh, the range mask is a powerful addition which you can apply to your local adjustments like the brush tool, the gradient filter or the radial filter. It depends on you what you want to use and it also depends on the image of course. In this case I will st simply start with a radial filter to easily show you how powerful it is. So first of all we have to drag the filter where we actually want to adjust uh, our image. Um, in this case, I will simply apply it to almost to the whole image because then I can see you, uh, then I can demonstrate you better. When you tick this mask down here, then you see, okay, there it's applying all our effects now. I, I recommend picking a color which is not prominent in your frame so it's easier to detect where it's going on. So that's fine. And now we can simply click on the range mask down here. And we have two options, color and luminance. Luminance basically works with the contrast, so all the dark to bright tones from left to right, same like our histogram, and the midtones in the middle. And we have a color picker, which we can use to select certain areas, and Camera Raw already shows us here on the luminance range where this tone is located, as you see when you look at the line going on here. So that's quite cool. And I personally use color a bit more than luminance, but that's mostly because um, color is more powerful in my opinion when you have subjects which are separated from the rest of your image. In this example here, trees. So then the color picker makes it super easy to select them and adjust them separately. That's what we will do in the next step. But the luminance is also quite strong and powerful when you want to add contrast or maybe some extra brightness to dark tones in your image because uh, I like to raise exposure more than raising the shadow slider because the shadow slider pulls up the darkest darks or the dark tones and that's it and when you make a nice selection of all the dark tones including darkest midtones and when you then raise the exposure you get a more evened out look but you have to be careful that you don't overdo it otherwise it will look washed out really quick really quickly but i will show you what i mean so first let's pick our yeah tone we want to adjust in this case something like that and now you see where it's located those um, sliders here tell us that we are selecting dark tones and everything to the right is not selected and if I would use the slider and drag it towards the yeah right everything here on the left side would have also uh, not be selected so and when I turn on the mask you see it better where it's actually uh, working and now like I said when I move the slider you see it's mo leaving out the darkest tones and now we're only touching the midtones or the darker midtones. And when we use, drag it to the right, you see that we are actually more targeting the brighter tones as well. Well, all which are in our radial adjustment. We can always further adjust the radial filter if we want to get more localized. All right. So yeah, let's leave it how it was actually something around here. And we can also work with the smoothness. That means if we want to select only the darkest darks and with a rougher selection, or we can make it bleed out a bit to other tones as well. I mostly start on 50, that's the default, and then yeah, see how it looks. 
and now we can simply raise our shadows. But that's what I meant with being careful because as you can see, it can look washed out super quickly. So let's see if we can narrow down the smoothness a bit. You see, sometimes that doesn't look good at all. So in this case, trial and arrow, that's how I like to work. I want to pick a broader part of our image and leave out some of the darkest tones. So they're not brightened. And then it looks more natural. And the cool thing is we can also add clarity now if we want to get more dimension in our rocks without touching the highlights. That's the good thing. All right. And we can of course do the same with the fog in the background if we want. So pick a new adjustment, drag it somewhere here, select our luminance mask, click on it. Let's check the mask. You see, oh, okay, quite nice. We can go down with the smoothness, smoothness if we want and also select only the brightest parts by leaving out the darker, mid darker highlights and midtones. Something like, like that. You always have to play around a little bit. And now we can brighten the fog. Super cool, without touching the rocks at all. And we could also again add some clarity if we want. Okay, quite nice. And now let's do the same with a color range adjustment. Let's say we want to brighten the trees. Let's use another radial filter. It's important to have it on the inside, of course, and fed at 100. That's what I like to do. And then let's go to color and simply sample a color here, which is prominent in the trees, something like that. Let's check our mask and you see it selects all the colors really nicely. And now we can work with the color range. It's same like the smoothness, but a, a little different. <clears throat> it basically um, tells you if you're actually narrowing down your adjustment only to the color you sampled or if you want that it bleeds out to similar color tones as well. In this case, I want to yeah, narrow it down. And you could by shift clicking, you can also add a new sample and you can do that up to five times. So it's it selects even more color tones. And if you don't want that, you can press alt and remove it again. All right, something like that. And now we can simply brighten our trees. And again, we can add some whites. We have all the adjustments available, which we have in the radial filter by default and add some clarity to add local contrast to it. All right. And this can be narrowed down again, of course, if you want by simply dragging around your radial filter. If you, let's say, only want to target those trees, simply add a radial filter there. If you want to target only those trees, only add a radial filter there. Really simple. Okay, that's it, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. It's all in all a really powerful tool I like to have in my toolbox. It always depends on the image, of course, if it makes sense or not. But that's the fun part about photo editing. Every image is unique and so you will always get something new out of it. Okay, so if you want to learn more about this topic, I have a article on my website where I describe it in depth and also other landscape photography tips. So make sure to check it out. I leave a link down in the description. It's Daniel, danielgastager.com slash blog. And yeah, I hope you will enjoy. See you next time.